How's it going guys? Sam here from GameSense and today we're just gonna get into the meat and potatoes of Diablo 4. For all of those people that are kind of on the fence and unsure on whether or not it's gonna be worth it to invest one your time and two your money into this game. For those of you that are on the fence you most likely probably don't care too much about the story you know you don't really care too much about all of the other Diablos before this how it all works in so we're just gonna kind of break it into three sections. And that's going to be the different types of people that I think might kind of still be on the fence, basically. The first group that I want to talk to is for the players that have never really touched this genre or the Diablo series. Strictly speaking, from what it would be like if you'd never touched an ARPG or, you know, you haven't played the other Diablos, I still think that this is a fantastic game for you. My main reasons being I feel like I'm able to jump into the story without knowing anything and still have a fantastic time. The cinematics are absolutely amazing. I recommend you watch all of them honestly just because it's it is so worth the five minutes of your life. The story has been so wonderfully voice acted and all of the dialogue really does mean something and you can really get a fantastic story throughout the whole campaign. Even the side quests are done very beautifully. On the other hand when it comes to things like performance and just like the abilities and things of that nature the game is really fun to play for someone that maybe hasn't touched an ARPG I think this is a fantastic intro because you get to actually use a lot of your abilities in this game when it comes to maybe like take path of exile a lot of your builds revolve around just using one ability you don't really have to use a lot of your other buttons outside of like flasks and Diablo 4 does a really good job of kind of forcing you basically to really use a bunch of different abilities in conjunction with each other when it comes to what might be more efficient, you might want to enjoy, you know, Path of Exile, but for someone that doesn't really care too much about anything and they're just trying to enjoy the game and the genre itself, this is a really, really fun type of game to play. I would say from a casual, more player-friendly standpoint that all of the classes are very viable. You can go any ability that you want, especially when you're on World Tier 1 and still have a good time. And I do feel like you can push World Tier 2 and possibly 3 doing whatever type of build you want. However, depending on the build, you might go a little bit slower than your friends that might be looking at guides and things of that nature. But regardless of how you play the game, I do think it's enjoyable. The second group of people that I want to talk to is kind of those that really enjoy ARPGs. Maybe you like min-maxing, you like the efficiency, you like the big numbers, as well as those that have kind of follow along with the Diablo story and just all the other Diablo games. For those that really just enjoy the genre, I do feel like this is a very fun game to play. However, I would say that in comparison to Path of Exile, they are two very different games. You're, you're not going to get the Path of Exile kind of feel, basically, when you're playing this game. And I, I do think that's a good thing. I, I like that they're different. I feel like you won't want to play the same exact game, just in a different universe. However, there are parts of the game that I do think are somewhat annoying, like going with your second character. It still takes you a lot of time to level up that second character. There's no kind of like twink items like in Path of Exile with Tabula Rasa, things of that nature. There's no way for you to really level up faster on that second character. So it is a time commitment if you're wanting to try a new build. The other somewhat negative about playing right now is that the season is not out so these characters aren't going to be extremely relevant once the season starts because you are going to have to level up a new character if you're going to want to play during that season for some people that might not be really the biggest deal i feel like for new players that's not really going to matter you're going to go play enjoy the game get the story down kind of figure out what works best for you but i feel like for some of the more competitive players you might want to just wait until the season's going to release because obviously there's going to be patches there's going to be changes builds are going to get good builds are going to be bad and if you're looking for specifically like min maxing or you know you're going to follow a build guide something of that nature you might not want to do it right now if you don't care that much for those of you that have been following along with the other diablos paying attention to the story and stuff like that i feel like this has been a fantastic game in regards to the cinematics in regards to the dialogue in regards to the side quests, the little areas that you can go to, the world itself is so fantastic. I feel like it's really stuck to what Diablo is, and that is just fantastic. The mood, the characters, the weapons, the world, they all work so well together. So if you're playing it for the story, I do feel like Diablo 4 is worth it. Moving on to the last group, which is kind of just all of the groups in general, or just all the players that might be worrying about microtransactions and MTXs, I don't personally feel like they're gonna have any crazy impact maybe this is just because i've kind of 
grown up with a lot of cash shops in my games. I mean, I started with RuneScape before it was RS3, and they kind of slowly brought those into the game. And while I will say probably killed it, uh, <laughs> I don't think it had that big of an impact when it came to just the cosmetics. I know there's a lot of people out there that really enjoyed when cosmetics were directly related to the achievements that someone had in game and that you weren't just able to put in, you know, $10, $20 to just look amazing. But on my end, I don't really feel like it's that big of a deal. There's a lot of cosmetics in the game that look fantastic. I mean, every time that you dismantle a piece of gear for the first time with a unique look, you're able to add that to your wardrobe and your wardrobe is able to basically transmog any gear for you. For those of you that might not know what that means, it just basically means that you can put any type of visual effect on any type of gear. So you're not locked into the gear that you're wearing, you can change it however you want. And personally for me, I've already ran into a lot of really cool gear in my opinion. While I might not be dismantling everything, I've definitely found things that I think just look fantastic. And I especially feel like in a game that's top down ARPG, you don't really see your character that much. Obviously, if they start throwing in cosmetics similar to Path of Exile with, you know, wings and just these giant auras and stuff like that, I might be a little bothered, but generally, they're not that expensive, and it also has no impact on your gameplay. I feel like I run into other characters pretty often, but it's not like something I see all over the place, and I don't think anyone should be penalized for just wanting to spend a couple dollars to look a little bit better. As long as it's not really impacting the gameplay, I don't really see an issue with it when they're also creating good, really well thought out cosmetics in game that you are able to get. For anyone that might have just needed that little nudge, I do hope that this helps you in your decision on whether or not you need to get Diablo 4. Obviously, do what is best for you, look into a bunch of gameplay, look into other videos similar to this. And I hope all of that really helps you make your final decision. So as always, guys, really appreciate the support. Likes and subscriptions are always greatly appreciated. And I hope to see you on the next one as always.